if there was anyone that I would use to describe to being the peak or the pinnacle of what it means to be the strongest in Tokyo Ghoul easily, Arima would be the definition of what it means to be the strongest and the peak between the CCG and ghouls alike. If you were a ghoul, without a doubt, Arima would be the last person that you would ever want to run into, especially when you take into consideration that he has the highest kill count among the CCG's finest. Throughout the entire history of the organization, Arima was able to kill the most ghouls ever. If you were to survive against him, you could easily boil it down to the devil's luck. And whenever we'd see him, he'd always have a silent and quiet demeanor about him, leaving one to guess what could actually be going on in his mind, especially when he is actually the Grim Reaper, taking every single life that comes in his path. How does he feel? Now, how in the world is he able to continue walking and leaving every single fight with his life? Simply put, there is a lot of mystery when it comes to this character. Arima is without a doubt a genius, and he would be one of the youngest members in the CCG, and would be personally selected by the CCG's chairman, and have him be promoted into a third class investigator ranking. It really gives you an idea as to just how deadly Arima was, with his main hobby being ghoul extermination. When designing Arima, Sui Ishida's main idea on his mind was the very fact that he wanted to keep Arima sadistic and massive, which is actually very accurate when we take into consideration how tall he is and how much he kills people. Like I said, there's definitely more than what meets the eye. While in his teens, Arima would have the ability to actually be able to work undercover and hunt down ghouls that would literally be in hiding and pretend to be students. However, most of these people would not be able to get the drop on Arima because he would suspect them at first glance. And this is just due to his keen nature and awareness. He's actually really unbelievable when you really want to get down to it. Being able to perfectly blend in as a student at school, although he would have the intent to kill any ghoul that would cross his path the entire time, and he would be weeding them all out easily, knowing who exactly had a killing intent in a moment's notice, and he would overpower them with his own killing intent. Teenage Arima's career would literally be the CCG fighting fire with fire, the ghouls, like we know, already would blend in society like regular human beings. However, Arima would do this same exact thing and hunt them down for the CCG, making him a monster who hunts down other monsters. And you could only imagine how Arima would feel doing such a thing, cutting down these people mercilessly. Even if he would have grown attached to them, he would just have to do what would be deemed as right by the law regardless of whether or not a ghoul was a good person or not could you really say that he was keeping the peace when he was literally just another instrument for violence it really makes you think arima would grow even further into the ranks of the ctg ultimately becoming their best prospect and becoming an investigator that would inspire the next generations of investigators to come leaving him to take all of the accolades that were possible in the CCG's history. However, this would only be possible upon killing thousands upon thousands of ghouls, if not a million. I wouldn't be surprised if he made it to that number because he killed every single day. One ghoul, groups of ghouls, possibly an army. But just know, you were already dead the minute you saw him. Even at 16 years old, he would kill 30 ghouls all by himself single-handed. And he would kill Toka's mother while he was 16. With Toka's father being able to do nothing, he couldn't even defend his own wife from a 16-year-old. However, things would soon begin to change when Arima would grow older. He would eventually, as you could guess, get tired of the killing and upon killing one of if not the strongest ghoul the one-eyed owl arima would actually end up sparing her life and sympathizing with her lifestyle and ideology maybe what could have ultimately made that change was the very fact that he was really just sick of taking people's lives especially when those people might not have been bad people to begin with and so the one-eyed owl and arima would come together to try and make a world where arima would no longer have to kill anyone 
It's kind of sad because he was really just a slave to the CCG the entire time. Most of us would commonly know Arima for being the guy to completely destroy Kaneki in a fight, stabbing him in the eye and making it so that his brain would be pierced. How did Kaneki survive this? I really couldn't tell you. Okay, I can. It's ghoul powers, but wow. The fact that he survived this is kind of crazy. But even then, after this, Arima would drag Kaneki into Cochlea, which is a prison for ghouls, and during this time, Arima would take Kaneki and lie to him, telling him that all of his friends were dead and that he killed all of them. And of course, you, how could you not believe him? Because he was able to single-handedly kill Kaneki with little to no effort. Kaneki would be driven into despair over these lies. However, we know Arima didn't kill any of them. And at this moment, he would end up relating to Kaneki through books. And he would actually end up being like a parent for Kaneki and having him be taken under his wing and he would train Kaneki how to fight and live as an investigator, leaving Kaneki to ultimately understand what it was like being Arima, or at least get an idea of his lifestyle. And of course with time, after Arima had Kaneki live a lie for so long, Kaneki would then soon find out the truth and end up fighting Arima to the death. However, Kaneki's attempts at trying to kill Arima would be unsuccessful with Arima actually taking his own life. And he would do this for reasons that are actually deeper than you would think. As it would turn out, Arima would actually be a half-human and a half-ghoul hybrid who was not born with a Kagune. And this would probably explain how he had an absurd amount of awareness and strength above most human beings and as to why he is able to win so many fights. Well, why exactly would Arima kill himself? This would be because he was actually going to die very soon, right in front of Kaneki from old age anyway, because of his accelerated aging process due to being a half-human, half-ghoul hybrid. Long story short, Arima would have prepared everything to happen up until this moment. He would have actually made it so that Kaneki would have been able to take his throne as the One-Eyed King, because Arima would actually be the One-Eyed King, but with Kaneki defeating him, quote-unquote, Kaneki would take his place as the One-Eyed King and would ultimately become the ruler of ghouls because of their fear and how much respect they had for the title of the One-Eyed King. However, throughout the entire time, no one would ever have known that the One-Eyed King was actually Arima, except for Edo. And that would more or less give you an understanding of the entire life of Arima, at least on a surface level.